let me say a word in defense of reason in dialogue with faith. Because faith is that proof. Faith unites us to that substance. But reason, in order to realize its full potential, needs the horizons revealed by and truths contained in the faith. And not just any faith, but the Catholic faith. Reagan said this, of he, of he and John Paul II, this is Reagan's own words, we both felt that a great mistake had been made at Yalta and that something must be done. Yalta is where Poland and the other Eastern European countries basically fell behind the Iron Curtain, right? 1945. Solidarity in Poland was the very weapon for bringing this about. Reagan told the Pope in this June 1982 meeting, hope remains in Poland and we, working together, can keep it alive. Can keep it alive. Now, maybe in the q and I could go through exactly what they did, how they worked together. Um, among other things, a lot of intelligence sharing went on that we still don't know about. It's amazing how many of these documents are still classified, especially on the Vatican side, where they were classified for like 75 years. Uh, they, did, uh, they had their staffs meeting together constantly. There was one team, Bill Casey, the CIA director, who, as I said, was Catholic, Ambassador Vernon Walters, they would fly, Casey would fly in a, in a black, black jet without windows, a C-141. He would fly it to the Vatican. And we know that Casey and Walters met with John Paul II at least 15 times in the six years between 1981 and 87, when Casey was, 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 uh, was DCI, Director of Central Intelligence. Back in Washington, the key players were Bill Clark, Casey, and P.O. Loggi the uh, apostolic delegate to the, to the United States. They would meet constantly. Um, Clark says, Casey and I dropped into Loggi's residence early mornings during critical times to gather his comments and counsel. I'd speak to him frequently on the phone. He would be in touch with the Pope. Uh, on at least six different occasions, Loggi came to the White House, met personally with me and Reagan. Uh, Casey and Clark had this code, code language because they were always fearful that the phones were bugged. If, if something hot was happening in Poland where they thought they might need to talk to the Pope or talk to Loggi, Clark would pick up the phone and he would say to Casey, I think we need to get some cappuccino. And that meant they needed to meet with Cardinal Loggi. They would go over to his residence and they would meet. So uh, they worked together. The Berlin Wall falls in 1989. The rest is history, collapse of communism. Um, Berlin Wall fell in November 1989. But what everybody forgets, is, is before the Berlin Wall fall, and the breach in the Berlin Wall is what really led to the collapse of communism in, in, in Eastern Europe, or so everybody think, uh, thinks that. Uh, Poland, in June 1989, held free and fair elections. That was the single most important thing in the collapse of communism. Gorbachev said when Poland held elections in June of 1989, free and fair elections, solidarity candidates won 99 out of 100 open seats. All right, and the one seat that they didn't win was won by a millionaire capitalist businessman from the West. I mean, the communists didn't, didn't win anything. Gorbachev said when, when that happened, when that election happened in Poland, I knew it was all over. I knew that was the end of it. What we didn't see, Reagan at that point in time was back in California. He left the presidency in January 1989. And he was called on, I was told this a few years ago, by a man named Chris Zawitkowski who ran the Polish-American uh, Foundation for Economic Research and Education. Um, Zawakowski and another Polish-American and two Solidarity members paid a visit to Reagan at his office in California. This would, would have been the spring of 1989. And they're getting ready for elections in June of 89 in Poland. So they called on Reagan, who Poles consider a hero, a national hero. And they wanted to get some campaigning advice on him. And, and they asked him, they said, you're the old master campaigner, you won by the way, imagine this. Reagan in 1980, you imagine Mitt Romney pulled this off. Uh, Reagan won 44 out of 50 states in 1980 against an incumbent president. And Jimmy Carter was ahead of Reagan by about 10 points um, at this point. And it was narrow, it was neck and neck. And Reagan in 1984 won 49 out of 50 states. So, so these polls go to, go to Reagan and they, they want some advice on campaigning, right? What exactly should we do going into the campaign? And they were taken aback when Reagan said this, here's my advice. Listen to your conscience. 
because that's where the Holy Spirit speaks to you. I thought, oh, okay, <laughs> didn't, didn't expect that. And then Reagan pointed over to a picture on the wall of John Paul II, and he said, he is my best friend. And he said, yes, you know, I'm Protestant, and he's Catholic, of course. He said, but, uh, but he's my best friend. So these two best friends work together in, uh, in taking down communism. Thank you.